Smile High. Woo! All right, I need your help. We're gonna do an experiment. And we are gonna create the most awesome wave this opera house has ever seen. We're gonna start here. You got, can you guys handle that? What? All right, all right. So we're gonna start here, bring it down, and we're gonna come back. And just for clarity's sake, none of this like, woo, uh-uh. Be like, woo, cause this is 10X mile high. All right, are you ready? All right, you ready? Set your step down, cause you know you got like 20 things you're holding on to. So set your step, like cell phone and the, you know. All right, you ready? All right. Nice! This time with feeling even more! Woo! You guys are the shizzle! So if you wonder, what does emotional intimacy in the workplace feel like? It feels like this. This beautiful, connected, related energy. Because we know what emotional intimacy is between friends, family, lovers. You know, whether you're around a campfire or a kitchen table, or perhaps just holding hands. And we also know the difference between making love and having sex. So what about in the workplace? Well, it's the contrast between making a difference through your work and having a job. For years, we have been told, separate your personal from your professional lives. Keep your emotions out of the work. And we have tried. And we have created tremendous dysfunction. We've got passive aggressive power struggles, right? And kind of some lack of interest in work as a whole. And yet, luckily, some organizations are really starting to get it. But careful, because just because you have a tornado slide and gourmet snacks at the CrossFit gym, right? That's all just lipstick on a pig without emotional intimacy. Because emotional intimacy is the secret sauce for having an extraordinary workplace culture. And there's a huge financial as well as emotional return on investment. On the financial side, disengaged workers cost our economy $390 billion a year. And on the emotional side, when people feel good about coming to work, they show up as better parents, better spouses, and better citizens. There's a huge ripple effect in our communities. I mean, just think about the last time you had a brutal day at work. I don't know about you, but I don't show up at home as my best self. Like, even my dog's like, yeah, thanks, Mom, I'll walk myself. <laughs> and you know, if it's one day, no big deal. But day in and day out, that's another situation altogether. I once had a woman, she told me, she said, there's days I would rather get in an accident than arrive to work. Every day we have an opportunity to create emotional intimacy in our workplace. But first, we gotta throw down a few falsehoods. The first of which is this separation between us and them. In the workplace, we have all sorts of delineations. We've got titles, we've got departments, old school, new school, and this crazy focus on individual performance, which really is kind of nutty if you think about it. Because really successful organizations get that they're a conscious community that's been brought together to fulfill on a shared purpose. Think about the Rube Goldberg machine or the mousetrap game that we played when we were kids. Right, the silver ball goes down the tube, flips over the bucket, and spins the wheel. All those pieces are integral and interdependent. The silver ball by itself is completely inconsequential. Like the wave we just did, if there had been a, you know, a substantial portion of you that are like, I'm not playing, it would have been really lame. <laughs> and the thing is, is we, we have this thing where we focus on our separateness. We have this tendency to focus on like, what's different about each other, and yet we have so much in common. 
We all have the basic human desire to be known, to matter, and to be included. So don't stereotype. Don't accept any of it, including ageism. Millennials are not entitled. Boomers are not stodgy. And this includes bosses. One of the biggest separations I see in organizations is between leadership and staff. And leadership, they're just people too. I mean, think about it, right? You have Mr. Burns on The Simpsons, pointy-haired guy in Dilbert, gotta love him, right? And Steve Carell on The Office. We are taught, we are taught that bosses are mean, they're greedy, and they're clueless. I had a client, his entire staff hated him. Actually built camaraderie around it, language if you will, called him Voldemort. <laughs> he was horrified. And he went to his team. He said, I am so sorry. I had no idea that this was your experience of me. And in that moment, they saw his humanity. So much so that they gave him a standing ovation. Another falsehood that I want to speak to today is the separation between work and life, as if they're two things to balance. Like two separate things, like really think about that. Because we spend an average of 2,000 hours a year working. That's our lives. That's our blood, sweat, and tears. Work is a part of our lives. So don't waste it. Don't think of work as something to just get through or where you have to just suck it up. Like instead, really get that all of your experiences, all of your circumstances, all of your choices have brought you to this place, to this time, to work with this team. This is your life and your 2,000 hours, so what are you gonna do about it? The last falsehood that I wanna just throw down is the separation between kind and candid. A friend of mine, she was an 80s working girl. She had on her control top pantyhose, Sans undies, commando style, if you will. And unbeknownst to her, when she walked out of the bathroom, her skirt was tucked into the back of her pantyhose. And nobody told her. For an hour, nobody told her. And you know they were all talking to each other. Because gossip is one of the quickest and easiest ways to emotional intimacy. It's social superglue, and we all do it. And yet it's such a sloppy second to real deal meaningful connection. It's cheap, it's mean, and it plays us small. So the next time I would really challenge you, be a stand for your coworkers' success and tell them Tell them if they have spinach in their teeth. Dude, I don't know if you know, but like when you freak out like that, the entire team shuts down. Or dude, I would wanna know, like I would want someone to tell me, you might wanna use some different deodorant. <laughs> right, because we all have blind spots. We all have blind spots. And no one wakes up in the morning and says, I want to be a crappy coworker today, or I want to smell. <laughs> you know, we're all just trying to do the best we can do. And yet, we consistently hide behind unkind niceness. I don't want to hurt his or her feelings. But what I can tell you is my friend's feelings were hurt. So what holds people back? And why don't we have more emotional intimacy in the workplace? And the painful irony is the reason we don't have more emotional intimacy is for fear of losing emotional intimacy. We fear more than anything not being liked. We fear being judged. 
and we fear not being included or belonging. So you're going to have to risk a little. But the stakes are so worth it. Again, your life, 2,000 hours, every single year. Right? So see others as valid as you. Show up and do your part, and be a stand for helping others do theirs. And let's take these last few minutes we've spent together, 350 hours collectively, to make emotional intimacy in the workplace as common and as easy as the wave. Thank you. <laughs>